I again. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you and to study a schematic for HP TouchSmart X2. So as you can see here, we have about 29 pages, as you can see here. Uh, we're gonna pass through all these pages, of course, the main pages, and I'm going to teach you the main important tips and tricks on how to read any laptop schematics. As I told you before, for all schematics, if you understand just how to read one schematic, you can read and understand any other schematic. So let's get started. So let's go to page one, as you can see. So here, as you can see, for all schematics in page one, we have the system diagram or the block diagram, okay? Where you can find many squares, as you can see, like this. So this squares or a rectangular in shape means chipsets and ICs. For example, for this one, this is the CPU, as you can see. Here we have the processor, okay? And here we have the North Bridge. This is the search bridge, okay? So the main chipsets in every motherboard. But for some motherboards, you can find that these chipsets are, are integrated together. So as you can see here, we have the CPU. This is the North Bridge. Here we have a bus. We call this bus the FSP or the front side bus. The bus that connects between the CPU and the North Bridge. So, and then we have here the suit bridge. So the suit bridge is connected to all ports in the motherboard, including the keyboard controller or the super IO and the SPI, the BIOS, the fan, etc. Also the keyboard, the touchpad, etc. So if you have a problem, for example, with mini connectors or the keyboard touchpad in your laptop, means automatically you should check the third bridge maybe the third bridge is failed so the north bridge of course is connected as you can see here to other chipsets or other controllers for example here we have the crt and lvds this is for graphic means automatically the graphic card is integrated with the north bridge okay we don't have here graphic card separated no it is integrated with the not bridge the proof is here we have the graphic connector okay and of course here we have the lan and network controllers okay here as you can see this is the clock generator the clock generator is always connected with the cpu and here we have its crystal with 14 megahertz so the clock generator some technicians discard this IC. You know why? Without this IC, the computer cannot work, definitely. Because I can consider it, this IC one of the most important ICs and component in every computer. This IC synchronized between all chipsets and parts in the motherboard. So, it gives the oscillation or the timing for all components of motherboard in order to work in a good state, okay? And of course, here we have the CPU thermal sensor. We have the DDR RAM. This is the DDR2, as you can see here. So always for every chipset or IC, you will find the page, for example, for the CPU, you will find it in page 5, 6, and 7, okay? You will find the schematic or the circuit diagram of the CPU. For example, for the CPU thermal sensor, you will find it in page 7, the RAM page, as you can see, 8 and 9, etc. Of course, also for the ports, the same thing. For example, the camera, the circuit diagram for the camera, you will find it in page 19. For the system charger, you will find it in page, as you can see here, 29. So the IC, of course, you will find also the reference for the IC that is responsible for the system charger. Here we have the SL6251A 
So this is the control IC. The IC that is responsible to generate the RAM voltage, this is its page. The VCCP, as you can see, for chipsets. The CPU core, we have the, the responsible IC is ACA6265 in page, in this page, as you can see. So here in this page, as you can see, we have just indexes and power and ground, as you can see. Of course, for indexes, each page, what we have in each page, as you can see, we have the page description and now. So for example, in page one, we have just the system block diagram that we have seen before. Page two, we have the system information. So please be careful. Do not discard this first pages because without these first pages without the block diagram without the index okay and also the power sequence you cannot understand the schematic so these first pages make the schematic easier so here for example so here in page two have the system information page three we're gonna see the power sequence chart the clock generator amd cpu etc as you can see so this is indexes. Here we have the power and ground, as you can see. So we have the label, active, description, control signal. Here, active means the, the states. I made a video before about where I explain these states. S0 states, S3, S4, S5, etc. So I will post for you the link of the video where I explain the states in the description box because this is a very important video you should understand these states if you understand these states you can understand how the motherboard and the laptop or computer work and this will help you to easily figure out and fix issues okay so for example for the vn the vn this is the main power for the motherboard, about 19 volt usually. This VN is always present. As you can see here, we have 18.5 volt for this laptop. Okay, so the VN is the main power or the AC adapter power. This voltage is always present in state 0, state 3, state 4, and state 5. Okay, also the plus. But this is also the main battery power, okay? Also, this is a main power. When the adapter is absent, is not connected, the laptop will work using this power. So this power exists, as you can see, also in all states, S0, S3, S4, and S5. So as I told you, the, the link in the description box for the video where I explain the states. Don't forget and don't hesitate to check and to see, to watch that video because it is a very unique and exclusive video. You cannot find in YouTube many videos that explain the states. So, here we have the plus EV, but as you can see for the RTC and KBC power 3.3 volt. You can test this voltage in the motherboard in all states. Plus 12 volts also all states and plus V core as you can see. The voltage for the processor as you can see plus V core. The CPU core power about as you can see 0 0.3 until 1.5 volt. This is the range of V core exists just in state zero as you can see okay exists just in state zero the same for cpu v dom b as you can see the same for one point volt one point volt also as you can see those are just you can test it in state zero for three volt as you can see and five volt as you can see for three volt and five volt always as you can see always power 5 volt always power 3 volt those power are like the main power always exists in all states as you can see
So let's move on to the third page where we have, as you can see, the power sequence. So these squares, as I told you before, are just means ICs. I, I made many, many videos about where I explain this power sequence. You can check my channel, you will find many, many videos where I, 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 I explain this, all this. So here, as you can see also, this is, as I told you before, the timing and the time where the signal become active, as you can see, okay? The time where the signal become active. This is signals, signals names, for example. For, for example, for the EB switch on, as you can see, when you press the power button, we have here a signal, EB switch on. Then we have the S5 on, as you can see. S5, as you can see, becomes on as soon as you push the power button, as you can see. We have S5 here. And then this signal, one by one, become generated, as you can see. We have North Bridge Power Good, South Bridge Power Good, as you can see. The CPU is the last one. I have the CPU clock in, the CPU reset, I have the CPU power OK here. The CPU is the last one that verify that all signals are OK. OK? So that's all for this video. So of course, we're going to continue studying the laptop and computer schematics step by step in order to become professionals in schematic reading. Thank you very much and see you soon and see you tomorrow.